Hey guys, uh, Aldo here from Tino Tachi, and uh, just want to apologize for not uploading for the past couple weeks, almost a few months now. Uh, life and other circumstances just kind of hindered that that process of uplo uploading and making videos, and hopefully we get on the right foot and uh, upload a little bit more consistent as uh, RC Drift is growing, and I myself have to adapt to the new people and also new questions that more and more people face so hopefully we get this started we get this going good and this week's lesson in this episode episode number two is going to be on basic front end alignment let's get into it so what does camber actually do so negative camber will assist in stabilizing the chassis in the direction of the lean for example if your camber is zero or at neutral, the chassis will want to always drive straight and it is mechanically less stable than having negative camber. However, it is very important to have left and right camber the exact same. Otherwise, the side, of the, the side that has less camber, the chassis will be pulled to. Kind of like if you have um, a brake issue where one side has more pressure than the other side where it's kind of leaning on like onto the side like that you're gonna have the same effect with your camber so always make sure measure it with a caliper or measure it with a ruler or take apart your arms and put them together and measure it you just got to get it perfect as everything in RC drift really does count and another key element in RC drift is going to be front tire contact batch now that is dictated by camber Using the edge with less contact or using the larger surface with more contact on the leading and trailing tires. Typically, more negative camber will increase control, less negative camber will make the steering milder. However, this is just relative to how the other alignment is set in the combination with camber and also the profile of your tire. So the ones that I have right here on the front are DRC, which have a pretty flat, flat patch. And there is a line, so if you run anything more than negative two or negative three, the tire will wear into that line. So if you're using any of those MST tires that have a rounder surface for constant contact on any angle and any camber up to seven degrees, uh, I would take notice of that in the future. Or if you're using any any DS Racing, one of the, the HF tires, the, the, Fe the Phoenix tires with the tread or even the overdose Bergeras, um, you will need to take into account how angle and tire patch are affecting the car either in a positive way or in a negative way. I'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory, but how do you adjust camber? Uh, to start off, you will always have your upper arm connected to a ball end or ball stud to the cap and to a turn buckle. And so if you loosen it, less camber, tighten it, more camber and you also have two points of this reference so you could adjust the top arm or you could adjust the bottom arm so if you have fixed arms like like my TTO2 with the MRC converted front end I really can't adjust camber and so whatever the car is set at I'm just gonna have to adjust to it via servo setting gyro and whatnot and so stock this car has about maybe negative seven degrees of camber and it just it works pretty well but i do wish that i had more adjustment and with a proper rc car or rc drift dedicated car without solid links and you have turnbuckle or even a little grub screw that's quite long and you could adjust that um, that's what i would do and also just as said this is mentioned before adjust it with a digital caliper so you can get that very precise reading as one side that has less camber will lean toward the other side and vice versa so you always want it to be equal and even if it is just half a degree it really will make a difference so now that we've passed over camber let's get right into caster so what is caster caster is the angle created by the steering pivot point or the kingpin in the front to back direction of the chassis. This angle should be leaning towards the back of the chassis. Uh, 
a way to to easily visualize this is caster is kind of like the steering fork on a bicycle so the more lean the more stable it's going to be but it's also going to make the steering sluggish or unresponsive so similar to a, a motorcycle like a cruiser that's why they call cruisers you know they're nice and smooth and they're not really that aggressive as compared to a sport bike where the rake or fork or caster is a little bit more aggressive re resulting into a more responsive front end to start out the amount of caster that i would recommend would be positive six to positive eight degrees and caster can be measured by using the camber gauge to measure the side of the ball joints on the upper and lower side of the knuckle so here just like on the camber gauge where you put it against the wheel you put it against the bottom stud to the top stud and you would measure it by using the sliding if uh, the sliding mechanism on the camber gauge if you have bigger studs like on an m like an mst where they use 5.8 or 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 something larger than that the stud uh, you might have to take an approximate reading just kind of just by eye glance or or by feel uh, you may not be able to use numbers quite as efficiently as you would with maybe a 4.8 4.3 stud or even five millimeter to me a stud so caster is closely related to camber and so as you turn your steering the camber throughout the steering will change relative to the caster setting and so your leading tire more negative camber will be cancelled out by the caster setting and eventually go zero cam zero camber if you have more camber depending with your caster and then positive camber depending on your caster setup and your trailing tire camber will increase by caster so in static position if you had uh, let's say negative six your trailing tire will most likely increase to maybe three degrees and so uh, going on to another future lesson where we're going to be getting into kpi and knuckle adjustment and so that's for a future reference so how do you adjust caster uh, you could adjust caster uh, by the front to back position on either the upper arm or the lower arm and so shown on my on my Travis my wrap of Travis I have a shim adjusting my caster note that if you do adjust on the bottom toe link you will be adjusting wheelbase and so you might have to adjust your rear arms in, in, in accordance to the front arm and always when you're adjusting front end everything affects everything else so just because you set up your camber a certain way and your toe a certain way when you just caster if you if you add more caster to the back you're going to increase toe and if it's more forward you're going to decrease toe and so just to go over that when you bring this arm back your toe is going to widen out if you bring your caster forward your toe is going to widen in and i would really just keep the changing the top arm adjustment if you change the bottom arm you can, again you're going to be adjusting wheelbase and there might be a little bit more troublesome for you rather than easy right and so i'd rather find a way to adjust your upper arm relocate something move something in order to get the adjustment that you want so lastly for basic front end alignment we're gonna get to toe out so you've probably seen many chassis with the front tires towed out and front toe and rc drift has a couple different meanings and a couple different meanings in other rc categories but toe is mainly just used to set the ackerman or change the ackerman throughout the steering or how parallel the the trailing wheel is compared to the lead wheel so for instance on my wrap of travis that uses a slide rack for the VX dock um, I can't really adjust my toe in accordance to my Ackerman as that's why I use a spacer all right so that adjusts my front link adjust my Ackerman but on a car with a side link just like my TTO2 I could adjust toe to adjust my Ackerman and so that's where this would be referencing 
and I will cover Ackerman a little bit later for for the advanced front end setting or just by itself but overall extreme toe will interfere with Ackerman and also your steering stroke right and so I would normally set up toe maybe a half a degree outward or maybe even a full degree outward just to adjust toe it really does does give that fine fine tooth feel um, you could really feel that when you throw the car the front end's going to grip up or you take a shallow line or a, or a deeper line according to your Ackerman and toe setup and also um, just like in video games where sometimes toe can slow the car down or speed it up in certain circumstances the same applies in RC drift where we as the driver don't have grip we're actually fighting grip right we have the loss of grip due to tire compound and so too much of one thing is not good just like just like only camber right where you have some extreme camber negative 12 negative 15 uh, that may look super baller but it is not functional right so you got to keep it keep it civil keep it keep it smart and so that's what i would do for toe just to keep it real simple most cars nowadays they either come with a version of a slide rack or a bell crank that you could kind of adjust very simply or even out the box adjustment is just perfect like for instance the rev d rdx uses a bell crank but the bell crank system works similarly to this slide rack where i could adjust ackerman based on length of spacer right so first off i want to thank you and also apologize at the same time for not uploading and thank you for watching the video and staying until the end uh, please like subscribe you could ask any question you want in the comment and um, i'll make sure to link in a couple uh, blogs that might help you to better visualize or if you're a more of a, a, a reader rather than a listener um, that might help you as well and so what's next uh, the third episode hopefully I get to do this either next week or the week after it depending on if I, if I have time will be um, KPI trail and scrub and so that's rather advanced and it will take a little bit of time to to really process and use those tuning aspects for the front end as when you're drifting and when you're tuning uh, the order that I would go in based on tuning is going to be front to rear. The rear may feel a little bit wonky, but the way that the car is going to handle in almost every turn, in every situation, whether it's a sweep or a hairpin, even a little small chicane, it's always going to be the front end, how responsive it is and how it's going to be moving. So to many drivers, how the front tire looks when drifting is part of that style. but. To really move on to a more advanced setup, increasing the mechanical stability with alignment is key in setting up the chassis in combination with gyro and your entire setup. So once again, thanks guys and hopefully we get to see you guys.